Greetings and salutations. Thank you for lending an ear to The Voice of the Times for Thursday, July 8, 2021. For today's editorial, a panel on every roof. One of the most interesting topics of discussion to emerge from the Manila Times Forum on Renewable Energy held on June 30 was presented by Charlie Aiko, the Chief Executive Officer of WeGen. Mr. Aiko argued that instead of focusing exclusively on the conventional model of power distribution that relies on a few large centralized generation facilities, the country should consider what he called a swarm strategy to spread the costs and risks of creating new energy supply. In his presentation, Aiko explained, instead of large power plants to supply the electricity needs of the country, let us build hundreds of thousands of small solar installations that are integrated into one system through net metering or energy aggregation. Put another way, the point Aiko was making was that if there are many small electricity generators for instance, thousands of individual houses with solar panels, the practical outcome can exactly be the same as if there was a single large generating facility. The individual houses or buildings would be supplying their own electricity needs, and at least some, if not most of them, would produce some excess electricity. This can be gathered in the local grid and redistributed, either to other local consumers or to the national grid to be transmitted to other areas that need the power. This type of system is in at least one respect superior to a single plant that would be producing a comparable amount of electricity. With a single plant, any shutdown removes its entire capacity from the grid at once. Everyone is familiar with the consequences of this as we have all experienced rolling brownouts recently. With a large number of small power sources however, it is a virtual impossibility that all of them would suffer an outage at the same time, unlike one large plant whose shutdown affects everyone. Thus, the net effect is better overall reliability of the power system. Approaching power supply from this perspective also solves the problem of transmission and distribution in difficult to reach areas. In addition, building and deploying the generation capacity takes very little time. Installing and connecting a house scale solar power system can be accomplished in less than a day. A larger installation, such as on a roof or factory roof, might take a couple of weeks. The fastest that a new power plant of even modest capacity can be built and brought online, based on the experience of projects here in the Philippines, is about a year. There are, of course, a number of challenges that need to be overcome before swarm-type systems can be deployed on a large scale. ICO's presentation touched on some of the regulatory and financial obstacles, in particular unproductive policies that limit the use of net metering, persistent red tape, and inconsistencies in obtaining permits, and the unavailability of credit for home or building owners who would like to have a solar power system but have difficulty in paying the initial costs. Likewise, there are also persistent misconceptions among consumers and even among policymakers and regulators who should know better that solar energy is inefficient, unreliable, and only provides energy on sunny days. While that was true up until the relatively recent past, the rapid evolution of the technology, along with complementary developments in battery technology and energy storage, have put solar energy nearly on par with other more conventional forms of power. All of the problems can be solved if government leaders demonstrate the political will and imagination to do so, and if the public, who are already fed up with chronically high energy prices and inconsistent electricity supply, are properly informed that there is a clean, cost-effective, and reliable alternative. Fortunately, there are a few government leaders who have recognized the advantages of renewable energy, and public attitudes are gradually shifting from skepticism to acceptance. Positive momentum is slowly building, and we hope that our future leadership will recognize the wisdom of encouraging it to continue. And that's the editorial for Thursday, July 8, 2021. For more news and information, get a copy of the Manila Times on print, subscribe to its digital edition, or log on to www.manilatimes.net. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, and listen to the Voice of the Times.